to do with primary ankle closure suspects and lessons from recent trials. So I'll be talking about the ZAP trial and others. So we heard about uh, ankle closure being an important form of glaucoma. And as uh, Dr. Tanush was mentioning, there are different stages of ankle closure. But the prevalence of ankle closure glaucoma is about 1% to 2% in many Asian populations. But a lot of people, about 5 to 10%, at least in Chinese people, have suspects or narrow angles. So this shows you that majority of people will not develop ankle closure glaucoma, but some of them will develop ankle closure glaucoma. But most of PSCS will not progress to ankle closure glaucoma. The question is whether we should do an iodotomy because this could prevent the progression to ankle closure glaucoma. But who should we do the iodotomy on and what is the risk versus not, uh, of doing it versus not doing it? Here's an example of a patient, 59-year-old lady with hyperopia of plus 2, 6'6 six, six vision, shallow anterior chamber with a very mild cataract. Her pressures are normal, her discs and seals are normal. She has no synechia closure, but almost 360 degrees of apposition. This is the Visante image showing you obvious aridotrabecular or arido angle contact. So in this patient, this is our PACS patient, how will you manage this patient? So this is a very common case that we get in Singapore, a 60-year-old lady with mild, almost minimal cataract, 6-6 vision, appositional closure with angle clo with no this normal this normal field, normal pressures, no PES. How many of you will laser PI in both eyes? How many of you use pilocarpin in both eyes? Bilateral phaco emulsification or observation? Okay, so as Dr. Ramanji was mentioning, should you observe this patient? And she mentioned that maybe you should do it if there's a family history or uh, people who don't come for follow-up. Now, in, as a clinician, in this patient sitting with us in our clinic, we worry. If we don't do anything, what if the patient develops acute ankle closure tomorrow or next week or a month later? Or maybe they come back a year later with very bad chronic ankle closure glaucoma. So this is our worry, right? The patient is sitting in front of us and we tell the patient, don't do anything, come back. And one year later, it comes back with chronic ankle closure glaucoma or one week later, comes back with acute ankle closure. This is our typical worry of this patient. Because should we do the prophylactic PI or not? We know that prophylactic PI may prevent progression and may prevent acute attack. But we also know that prophylactic PI may have issues. Some patients have visual symptoms, some get corneal endothelial damage, some get cataract. And so that's why there was a study recently done called the ZAP trial. And the ZAP trial stands for Songshan Angle Closure Prevention Trial because the study was done in Songshan uh, Center in China, in Guangzhou. And uh, it's a very catchy name, of course. So the trial was to look at what is the role of iodotomy in primary angle closure suspects. How should we manage them? Who should we PI? And what do we, happens if we don't do it? or what happens when we do the PI. So it's a randomized controlled trial, and one eye was randomized to PI, and the other eye was no treatment. So people with bilateral PACS were randomized and followed up for six years. About 900 patients were uh, enrolled, and there were about a federal trial in Singapore, which I'll talk about, called the Analyst Trial. Now, the Singapore trial started, I think, before the China trial, but China is so fast, you know, they can build a hospital in 14 days. They can recruit 900 patients in, like, in a year. We took like three years to recruit 500 patients. So imagine how fast China can go. And the primary outcome measure was incidence of primary ankle closure, not PACG, yeah, but primary ankle closure, which was defined as pressures above 24 on two occasions, development of synechia closure by one clock hour, or an acute episode. So this is the primary outcome measure. And the average age was 59 years old. There were more females. And as I said, the follow-up was 65 years. And very good follow-up rates, about 65% completed all uh, six years. Sorry. Now, this is the outcome measure. And the outcome in the sentinel follow-up was 4.9 per 1,000 eye years in the iodotomy group compared to about 8 per 1,000 eye years in the control group. So 19 against 36. And this was, of course, significant. but surprisingly low. Now, what is this 1,000 eye years? Uh, people are very confused by it, but roughly 
2% progress in the LPI group and about 4% progress if we did nothing. Okay? So this was the rough results over six years. Now, of course, if you did the PI, it reduced your risk by about half, or 50%, and there was no long-term adverse events identified in terms of the iridotomy group. Now, remember, the primary outcome measure was not glaucoma, but PAC, and most of the people who had PAC had sinicular PAC, and some with high IOP, there were very few cases of acute angle closure. So what it shows was that, wow, the risk of nothing was quite low, okay, 4% in this study, and this was very surprising because, as, you, as Dr. Siota mentioned, the Robbie Thomas study showed 22% progress in five years in India. But here it was only 4% progress without doing anything, and by doing the uh, PI, it was 2%, so it reduced the risk by half. So, of course, on a programmatic level, on a population-based level, they will not recommend PI for everybody, okay, because we, it's not valid. But that doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't mean that you, it affects you as an individual, your, your own patient, okay? It's on a population level, they don't recommend PI. Singapore study found, this is unpublished, 10% progressed without doing anything, and then versus 5% after PI. So, again, low results, but also not so high, also, but higher than the, the Chinese China study. So, 4 to 10, and 2 to 5, so a little bit higher. And we don't know why that is entire in Singapore, but it could be because in Singapore, we recruited people who were from the hospital, where China recruited people in the community. And again, the outcome measure was PAC, and there was only two people who had acute tax. So now, you should ask yourself, is this applicable to India? Because Chinese population you know, may not be applicable to India. And yes, it's probably true, but we don't know what's the data for India. But certainly, uh, we think that in Chinese are maybe higher risk because they are much more uh, glaucoma prevalence could be higher. Now, perhaps it's a younger population now. Remember, mean age is 59 years. Now, it's important because we recruit, did not recruit people with very significant cataracts. Now, if they have significant cataracts, it's simple. You take out the cataract, right? So we are not so interested in those in the 70s and 80s because these people have cataract with narrow angles. The solution is cataract surgery. So this is the people who have younger but no cataract. Right? And this is what we, we worry about in those cases, as, as I mentioned, you have the first example, 59-year-old patient, no cataract, 6'6 vision. Uh, this is the group we're worrying about. And here again, as I said, the community versus uh, hospital recruitment is there. So has ZAP managed, affected management of PACS? So now for me, in my practice, I will tell the patient, okay, we have good data now from a Chinese population, at least in Singapore and in China, if you have a PACS sitting today and you don't do anything, you pay progress maybe 5 to 10%. If you do the iridotomy, you reduce your risk from maybe 2 to 5%. Okay? So this is one way of counseling the patient and let the patient decide, you know, do they want to take the risk or not? Okay? Because you can't tell the patient, no, don't do anything. Just observe because remember, some people de develop acute attack and you don't have a case coming to you in a lawsuit after a few years with a chronic ankle closure glaucoma, a patient came to you earlier, didn't do anything, for example, right? So they, you have to do the correct counselling and discuss the patient, the options. Observation versus laser. As I said earlier, if the patient's got cataract, it's no problem. Just ask them to do the cataract surgery. Now, some patients will tell me, Doc, I don't know what to do, you know? You tell me what to do. Right? So that's a bit more difficult, okay? Because if the patient is not, is not willing to take the risk, then... Perhaps, you know, um, sorry, just do the PI, right? Because they may, some people don't understand, you know, they just don't understand what is risk, okay? But I think you have to discuss with the patient, right? So who should go for the PI? And as Dr. Shahi Hota mentioned, those who need regular dilation, family history, maybe poor excess, definitely, okay? Symptomatic. So those who say they have intermittent headaches, pain, or, I mean, just do the PI, right? Because you don't know. This could be intermittent acute angle closure or people who have, of course, PAC, PACG, acute angle closure, fellow eyes, this is clear. They, uh, they all must go for PI. But here I'm talking about those with PACS. These are the people who definitely should go for PI. But the rest, you have to discuss the option to the patient. Say there's good studies now that show you the, the results and make the, let the patient decide on what to do, for whether to do the PI or not. So in summary, I think the, the recent trials have shown low risk of progression in PACS, 
giving you the patient uh, option of observation, and of course discuss the risk of the patient. If in doubt, do the laser PI. If you have a cataract, of course, remove the cataract. I'd like to acknowledge here uh, the groups, uh, my, my co colleagues involved in the study, as well as the co uh, group from the ZAP trial in Hong Kong, and I'd like to invite you to Kuala Lumpur for the Asia-Pacific Glaucoma Congress. Thank you.